Hi there, welcome to edupediaworld.com. You are watching the videos on probability. So in this video, we will discuss some of the activities related to probability. How we can apply our experimental approach to prove the probability concept. So we will be discussing some of the activities which you can find useful and which will also help you in solving the exam style questions, right? So let's get started with the first activity which is activity number one. Activity says that take any coin, toss it 10 times and note down the number of times a head and tail comes up, right? And then you record your observations in the form of following table, right? So let's say these are the number of times the coin is tossed, let's say 10 times and then we need to observe, let's say number of times head comes up, let's say it comes out to be 6 times, right? And number of times the tail comes out, let's say it comes out to be 4 times. Now, so you always have to remember that the number of times the head comes up plus the number of, let's say, number of times head comes up plus number of times tail comes up should always be equals to 10. Means these individual events should never cross the total number of events. So this is a very important point you have to always remember in your mind, right? Now, what we need to write down, we need to then what we need to do is we need to write down values of the following fractions, right? Let's say first one is you can write number of times a head comes up upon total number of times the coin is tossed, right? So this is the values we have to note it down. Let's say the number of times the head comes up is 6 upon the total number of times the coin is tossed. This is 10. So value comes out to be 0 0.6, right? So next value we need to write down is number of times times a tail comes up upon total number of times the coin is tossed. Let's say it comes out to be 4 by 10. So this comes out to be 0 0.4. So these are the values we have obtained when the number of times a coin is tossed is 10. Now, next point is, let's say, toss the coin now 20 times, right? So, and in the same way, you need to record your observation as above. Again, you need to find these values, right? Let's say if you toss the coin 20 times, and let's say the head comes out to be 13 times, and the tail comes out to be 7 times, right? Then again, you need to find the fractions or values like this then you again need to repeat the observation for the higher values and then you will find that as the number as the number of tosses gets larger right so as the number of tosses get larger the value of fraction will approach to 0 0.5 or we can say it will come closer to 0 0.5. Why? Because as we have already discussed, when we are applying experimental approach, let's say we tossed a coin once only, so the probability of coming head and tail is 50-50, right? So whenever we apply experimental approach, we have to apply unbiasing, uh, we have to be very neutral, right? So whenever we have a large data set, then the values of fraction uh, will approach to 0 0.5 means that our values are neutral. So this is how we can approve our probability concept through the experimental approach by using these kind of activities, right? So let's move on to the next activity, which is activity number two. This activity says that divide the class into groups of two or three students, right? Let's each student group toss a coin 15 times. Another student in each group should record the observation regarding head and tails. Then note that coins of the same denomination should be used in all the groups. So the coins should be same and it will be treated as if they are only one coin, right? So the denomination should be the same, right? So this means first we have to make a table like this. In the first it comes out to be group, then comes out to be number of heads, right? Then comes out to be number of tails, right? Then comes out to be, we can say, number of heads upon total number of trials or we can say total number of events, right? Then 
comes out to be number of tails upon total number of trials right so let's say for the group 1 the number of head comes out to be let's say 3 then number of tails comes out to be 12 right so this will come out to be number of heads upon number of trials so it will be 3 upon 15 because it is 3 plus 12 right then number of tails will come out to be 12 upon 15 so this is the first group right let's say it's the second group again tosses the coin then let's say the number of heads comes out to be seven times number of tails come out to be eight times so this will become seven plus three upon 15 plus 15 so this will come out to be 10 upon 30 right so similarly it will come out to be 8 plus 12 upon 15 plus 15 so which will come out to be 20 upon 30 right so let's consider the next group which is third now the number of heads comes out to be 7 again and number of tails comes out to be 8 right so this will come out to be now 7 plus 10 upon 15 plus 30 right so this will come out to be 17 by 45 so this will come out to be 8 plus 20 upon 15 plus 30 so this will come out to be 28 by 45 right so what you can observe over here is so as we are increasing the number of toss let's say 15 over here 15 over here 15 over here so we can say that the value of head and tail is again approaching closer to 0 0.5 right so this means to approve our experimental approach to or we can say to get a better estimation of the probability or likely happening of event we need to have a lot of data right so we need to have a sufficient data so that we have a neutral kind of our experimental approach so this is how we can use the activities to prove the concept of probability right so let's move on to the next activity which is activity number three now activity says that throw a die 20 times and note down the number of times the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 come up and you need to record your observation in the form of table, right? So, first of all, draw a table, right? You can say number of times a die is thrown, right? Then over here, number of times these scores turn up right so let's say over here we write 1 2 3 4 5 over here we write 6 let's say we have thrown a die 20 times so, so we write 20 over here this comes out to be 5 times let's say this comes out to be 7 times right this comes out to be let's say 3 comes out to be 4 times so let's say this comes out to be 2 times that this comes out to be 1 one time so we need to check the sum should be 20 right so it is 5 plus 7 which is 12 12 plus 4 is which is 16 16 plus 2 is 18 18 plus 1 is 19 19 plus 1 is 20 right so these are all the observation now let's say number of times one turn up right so this will come out to be this part divided by this part so which is 5 by 20 similarly we can say number of times two turn up so which we can find 7 by 20 similarly we can say the number of times three turn up 4 by 20 then similarly we say that the number of time the four turns up 2 by 20 again how many times the five turns up so which is 1 by 20 so which is 1 by 20 right so this is all the probability when the die is thrown 20 times numbers turning up right so let's say if we increase the number from 20 to 30 again we will have a different observations so then for 40 we will have another different observation so what we can observe is that as you increase the number of observations what you can observe is that values of each fraction will approach to 1 upon 6 right so again this approves our experimental approach that through activities we can approve the concept of probability right so let's move on to the next activity which is activity number four on 
which is also a last activity for this video. This activity says that toss two coins simultaneously 10 times and record your observations in the form of table. So first of all, draw a table. Number of times the two coins are tossed, right? Then over here we can say that number of times no head comes up, right? Over here we can write one head comes up. Over here we can write two head comes up. So let's say the coin is tossed 10 times. No head comes out to be, let's say, two times. One head comes out to be, let's say, five times. And two head comes out to be, let's say, three times. This is the probability now. So what you will observe is, let's say, we find the value of fraction. So let's say, value for no head it will be 2 by 10 and value for one head coming up is 5 by 10 and value for two head coming simultaneously is 3 by 10 right now so this is all the probability of coming no head one head and two head simultaneous right now again if you increase the number of observations then the value of probability will change, right? So, what you will observe is, so as you increase the value of number of observations, this value will approach, so this value will approach to 0 0.25, right? And this value will approach to 0 0.5 and this value will approach to 0 0.25. So, this again approves that we can apply the activities through experimental approach to approve our concepts of probability, right? Now, these are all the activities we have discussed so far for the probabilities. Now, what is a general formula or we can say what is a general definition for the probability, right? So, you have to note this point very carefully because for this definition only, you will solve whole chapter related to the probability, right? <coughs> so, the definition says that let n, we can say that let n be the total number of trials right and we can say that the empirical probability empirical means equal likely which is denoted by p e so the symbol p e refers p means probability and e means happening of events right so this is the representation of an symbol so p e of an event e is given by we can say p e equals to number of trials in which event happened upon total number of trials so this is the definition and the formula for solving any kind of probability concept in this chapter so in the end i can say that thank you for watching this video on edupediaworld.com keep watching further videos have a nice day